In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to greet my niece, uh, who, uh, from the United States of America, uh, sent me an email asking for an explanation of Revelation 17, where uh, the Apostle writes about Babylon, uh, sorry to say, the great whore, and uh, it is claimed by some denominations that that Babylon was or is actually the Catholic Church and uh, that uh, she is such the big traitor, the big adulteress, because she meaning the Catholic Church, passed from, changed the Sabbath to the uh, Sunday. Well, first of all, let me just give a very fast answer. It's not just the Catholic Church, which celebrates liturgy on Sunday, but actually all the churches, uh, except the Seventh-day Adventists, if we want to consider them as a church <clears throat> or their several uh, denominations. So, in the, this very book of Revelation, first chapter, verse 10, St. John, or John the Theologian, talks about himself, saying that he was in the island of Patmos and Kyriaki Emera on the day of the Lord. Now, ask any Greek person, Kyriaki, as Giragi in Armenian, the day of the Lord, it is Sunday. Kyriaki, of Kyrios, the Lord, Kyriaki, the day, Kyriaki Imera, the day of the Lord. Why Jesus did not change the precept, he did not erase the precept. Well, actually, he never respected the rest of the Sabbath, but he respected the prayer of the Sabbath, as we read in, in Luke uh, chapter 4, verses 15 and following. But since he rose from the dead on a Sunday, as we very clearly read in Mark 16, then the day of the Lord became the Sunday. Actually, I am, it's, uh, I'm repeating just the same thing. The day of the Lord became the Kyriaki, which means the day of the Lord, the Sunday. Now, how about this text? Of, uh, well, this text does not say, just for your information, that Babylon became a whore because she allegedly changed the Sabbath into a Sunday. Actually, the book of Revelation, at least twice, talks about the synagogue of Satan. The synagogue of Satan are Jews who persecuted the church. And according to some scholars, the beast of the land are uh, the Jews who persecuted the church and those people were of course Sabbath keepers and they still are and the beast of the sea was the Roman Empire according to some scholars according to most recent studies the beast of the land are the Jews persecuting Christians and the beast in, in the Holy Land which we call the land of Canaan, the land of Palestine, and the beast of the sea, it's also the Jews of the diaspora persecuting Christians or having Christians persecuted through the Romans like Nero or through, like with Jesus, the Jews persecuted and had Jesus killed, but through Pontius Pilate and the Roman soldiers. But by saying this, we are not anti-Semites, we are just trying to explain the expressions beast 
of the land, beast of the sea, and the other expression, the synagogue of Satan. The synagogue of Satan. Uh, of course, I, I am sure that uh, our brothers and sisters who, who insist so much on the Sabbath, although they are Christian or being Christian, that of course they are not part of that uh, synagogue of Satan which has been denounced by the book of Revelation. Well, who is Babylon? Well, let's connect this with the first letter of St. Peter. Let's see, it's chapter 5, verse 13. When St. Peter talks about Mark, his spiritual son, and then Babylon, but he says, the chosen one in Babylon. Let me see, I hope to find the text. The chosen, sorry, yeah, it will take just one minute. First Peter 5, 13. Aspazete imas i en vavilloni sinaklekti. The chosen one in Babylon. So, if you claim that Babylon is the city of Rome, which we will do in a minute, the church is not the pagan Rome, the pagan city of Rome. The pagan city of Rome is Babylon. And they use this hidden way of talking about in the pagan Rome because they were living under persecution. St. Peter says, the chosen one, Sineclecti, in Babylon, which means in Rome, and my son, Marcus, or Mark. That, that pagan Babylon had, because if you want the text, well, you need the whole context. You cannot just take off one verse outside the context and, uh, and interpret it as you please. This Babylon, meaning the pagan city of Rome, has, uh, is sitting on a beast, a beast which has seven Seven heads. It is the seven hills of Rome. Not of the Vatican, but of Rome, of pagan Rome. She was full, or yes, she was full with the blood of the Holy Ones, put to death in order to witness for Jesus. Well, actually, the first popes at least the first 30 popes died martyrs. They were put to death. By whom? By pagan Rome. Had they been pagan, pagan Rome would have never, would have never put them to death. It, we are also told about 10, 10 kings. Oh, is it? Ten kings or seven kings? Seven kings, sorry. Who are these seven kings? Well, it's the it's seven pagan emperors of Rome. The ones who reigned for years. So if you take away some who reigned only four months, like Galba, Oton, Vitellius, who reigned only for some months between 68 and 69 AD. The others are Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, Nero, Vespasian, Tit Vespasian, Titus, and the eighth one would be Domitian. In other words, if you say that that whore was 
the Catholic Church. You are just saying that the Catholic Church was there in the first century. And where were your denominations, my dear brothers and sisters? This I say with all respect and love and esteem in Christ. So, when you know that all our dear Protestant denominations were born after 1520, and many of them were born in the United States of America, which is a new world, a new continent, after the 18th century, then of course, what does that mean? Did Jesus leave his church all this time, all these centuries? He who actually promised exactly the opposite. Here I am with you all the days until the end of time. Matthew 28, 20, the last verse of the Gospel of St. Matthew. Well, it's impossible that Jesus left his church all these centuries until the birth of a, a German priest here, um, a, an English king there, uh, a Swiss priest here. Uh, a pastor there, especially in the Anglo-Saxon countries. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, just for your information and to the best of my knowledge, I, the Catholic Church is not against, let's say, resting on, on Saturday. Apparently, even I am told, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, uh, I don't know if these data are, uh, I would say, um, accurate, that the Orthodox Church, well, rests on the Saturday, but celebrates the Sunday. Anyway, in the weekend regulation, people rest, whether they like it or not, <laughs> On the Sabbath, on the Saturday, but Christians celebrate the Sunday. Anyway, there is no mention of Saturday, Sunday in Revelation 17, and the whole context talks not about the Roman Catholic Church, but the pagan Rome. Thank you.